so welcome to tonight's class everyone. Um, so like I said, just for class you'll just need a block, a blanket and just a bed pillow. So just kind of have them somewhere handy. Um, to start off with class, we're just going to do a reclined cobbler's pose. So you're going to bring your block onto the mat and you basically want the block to go right at the bottom um, of your shoulder blades. So kind of like where your bra strap is. So it might need a little bit of shiggle about to get yourself there. And then you sort of bring your head down to the mat, soles of your feet together, and your little knees are gonna open out to the side. And we're just gonna let our hands fall naturally, just down to the side. So opening up into our chest, opening up into our, our neck and our throat. And with your feet placed in here, your feet can be as close to your body as you like, or they can be quite far apart, just whatever's comfortable for your hip flexors tonight. It's important to recognize that sometimes when you come to your mat, a pose that felt good a previous time might feel completely different this time. So just having a little bit of awareness to how this feels. Are you comfortable here? Do you need to make any tiny adjustments? Once you find a bit of stillness there, just starting to deepen our breath a little bit. And if you've maybe just finished a day of working from home, there's any kind of little work bits that are still with you in your mind, just using those exhales to rinse them away. It's important that when we come to our mat, we are present. And we are here just for us. And that's something I want you to focus on during the class tonight. Just focus on you. Focus on all your uniqueness. Focus on what differentiates you from the next person. And honour all those differences. Think about stages in your life that have shaped you as a person. And thinking about how potentially that those stages in your life have influenced where you are today. It's important to remember that no matter what stage or what fork in the road we took with our journey, that that was the correct one, as that has made you who you are today. I'm just going to take a couple more rounds of breath here. And with each of these rounds, I really want you to think about expanding your tummy up. So with every inhale, almost pushing your tummy out here belly button comes out to the sky and every exhale bring that belly button into your spine. So warming up the whole of our front body here. So we're opening through the chest, we're also opening through our abdominals and into our belly as well. With every inhale really reaching out through those collarbones. Taking three more breaths there. And again, if you have anything else you need to exhale out, welcome to exhale out a sigh. And then slowly, once you've done those three breaths, you're just going to move over to this, just lifting the block out from underneath you and just bringing your back down onto the mat and just resettling for a couple of breaths here, just feeling that openness fall along the top of your back. Feeling how much expansion you've created there. And you can keep your eyes closed. We're just going to grab onto the edges of our legs and just using our hands, just bringing our legs together. And enjoying those sensations that we feel in our inner thighs as we bring those, our legs back together. Quite often we don't feel the benefit of a pose until we come out of it. 
then just bringing your feet so that they're hip width apart and we're just going to knock both our knees over to the right hand side just coming into a supine twist at the start of class here so your hands can be down by your side or if you have the space just open them up into a nice t-shape and just let your gaze fall wherever feels natural and as we are in the start of practice just being gentle on your body here so a nice light supine twist breathing into our left side body here and your next inhale just bringing our knees back through the center and then dropping our knees over to the left hand side again gaze just wherever feels nice for you And letting that right rib cage really balloon out to the side there. Every inhale you're taking. And we always start class with this thoughts of bringing awareness to our breath. It's important to keep those thoughts and that awareness with our breath throughout class. Your breath is there to help you move. We subconsciously do it all the time. It's nice to bring a little bit of awareness to that life force. And then your next inhale, using your core, bring your knees back through the center. Then we're just going to lift our right foot up to the sky, flexing our toes, and then bringing our right knee in towards our shoulder, coming into a half happy baby. So maybe just grabbing onto the back of your thigh just to start. And if you want, even take some little circles with that. And then if you're feeling open, you can reach up and grab the inner or outer edges of your feet. Just depends on how to open your shoulders feel. If your shoulders feel open, grab the outer edge, so the pinky side edge. Or if your shoulders are feeling quite closed and are still quite up near your ears, you can grab the inner edge of your foot. And just letting the weight of the hands bring that knee down to your underarm. No grabbing or pulling action. And keeping that tailbone nice and long. And then exhale just to release that down to the ground and the same with the left hand side just taking the same steps here so reaching your leg up and then bringing that knee into your chest and just starting off by grabbing behind the thigh maybe take some small circles into the hip imagining your heel was a pencil and you could draw circles in your ceiling and then if you want just deepening that a little bit so grabbing the inner or outer edges again depending on how your shoulders are feeling today and tailbone nice and long. Just keep grinding down through both your hips. Taking one more breath here. And then exhale, just lowering that foot down to now. We're going to bring our knees into our chest. And just bring your um, fingers just behind your knees. Your thumbs are going to stick out. We're just going to do a couple of rocks and rolls just all along our spine. Just to massage out our back a little bit. And you've done that a couple of times. Just coming up to sit and then crossing over our ankles. And we're just going to come in to um, lean on our knees. Now if you want here, because we are going to be here for a little bit, you can just place your blanket just underneath your knees because we're going to be rise, and we're going to rise up here. So rise up so that your um, hips are above your knees. We're going to come into a broken toe pose. Um, it might sound daunting, but don't worry. <laughs> so you're going to basically sit up on your heels and your toes are going to be tucked under. Now what I want you to do, because that pinky toe doesn't like to um, behave, is you're going to actually manually place all five toes onto the mat on both sides. Now if this feels intense already, you're welcome to bring your hands onto the floor or bring your hands onto your knees just to support the weight or bring the weight all the way back and roll your shoulders back, hands spin up to the sky. We're going to take five deep breaths here. We're working into the fascia of the feet. So all those nice little webs of material in our feet opening up 
breathing into that opening in the soles of our feet. Taking one more inhale here. And then exhale, shifting your weight forward to your hand to your palm, and then slowly scrunching those toes up and then just tapping those toes onto the mat. Good, we're gonna come into that again. So now you know what it feels like. <laughs> we're gonna maybe take it for a couple of extra breaths. Now if you want to come out of it at any point, like I said, just bring your weight forward and you can unscrunch your toes. So if you wanna go a little bit deeper this time, you're welcome to. Maybe close down the eyes and take some deep breaths. When, when you're stretching, we talk about layers. And as we move through a stretch, we feel those layers peeling off. So you can probably feel your foot starting to expand here. You start to opening up through your heels. Taking one more inhale. And exhale, lean forward, slowly scrunch your toes up and just tap them onto the mat. And there we go, wiggling out our ankles, very good. And then you can keep the padding under your knees or you can set your blanket just off to the side. And we're just gonna do some seated cat cows here. So bringing your hands down to your knees, so you're sitting on your heels. We're gonna inhale to open our chest forward, bring our shoulder blades and our elbows together and exhale to push it away, rounding away. And really shift your weight back, almost your knees start to rise. Inhale to scoop that chest forward, chin up, and exhale to round it away. And we're gonna bring a bit of a hand movement into this. So just coming back to sit neutral, your hands are gonna to come to heart center. We're gonna inhale, flipping our palms away from us, reaching up, opening through the chest, and then exhale, hands through to heart center, palms towards us, we're gonna push them away into our cat. Inhale, hands to the center, flip the palms, reach up. And exhale, hands through the center, flip the palms there towards you and then push away. Inhale, hands through the center, flip the palms, reaching up from your hips all the way to your fingers. And exhale to swap it up. Knuckles push away from you, round into your spine. One more time, inhale to reach up, palms up to the sky creating space in your neck and exhale, bringing your hands down to center. And just taking a moment here just to see how your back's feeling. And then we're gonna come into a seated twist. So we're gonna bring our right hand just behind us on the floor. And if the floor is a little far away, you can take a block and just place your hands on a block. Bringing your left hand just the outside of your right knee. And then imagining there's string from your, your hips all the way through your body up to the crown of your head. You're gonna inhale, nice proud chest and exhale, just twisting out to the right hand side, pulling that low tummy in and up. So your belly button as if someone's pulling it from behind. And taking some nice breaths here, keeping your um, shoulders away from your ears. We wanna think about wringing out our spine like a dishcloth. One more inhale, and then exhale to bring us round to center. If you want to use a block on the other side, you're welcome to. So left hand to the ground or to the block, right hand is to the outside of the left knee. Again, reaching our chest up, and exhale to twist round to the left hand side. And by picking up that low belly, it allows us just to twist that a little bit deeper. And then exhaling, coming back round to centre. We're just going to come onto our all fours here. So hands are going to be directly underneath your shoulders, spreading your fingers nice and wide so you've got a nice solid base. Your toes are going to be untucked, so your toenails are down to the mat. And just a slight tucking at the tailbone. And what we mean by that, if you want to bring your hand to your low back, Imagine pushing your tailbone down, so your tailbone's coming towards the mat, and you, by doing that, you'll feel your front body just start to light up and start to engage. And we're gonna take a couple of cat cows just in this position, so dropping your chest down, inhale to open up, broaden through the shoulder blades, and exhale, pushing away. Inhale to open, and 
exhale to push away. And then coming into neutral, and we're just going to do that, but we're going to um, bring our legs in. So on an inhale, you're going to reach that leg out nice and open chest, and exhale, crunching that knee in towards your nose, rounding through your back. Inhale to reach that leg away, really stamp that foot behind you, and then exhale to crunch it up. Inhale to reach, keep broadening through your chest, the so same cat cow back, and exhale, bring back in. Then one more time, pushing that heel away, elongating all along your spine, and then exhale to round it in. And then bringing your knee down. And we're just going to come into a quick um, disco cat. So imagine that your tailbone has got like a, a pencil on the end of it, and you're just going to start to draw circles with your tailbone. And by doing that, we're moving our spine in all directions. And then you can change it up. And you can make those circles as big or as small as you want. And you'll find you'll start by just moving your bum. And then I'll move up your spine. And then I'll move all the way up into your shoulders. And then once you've done that a couple of times, just finding stillness back in the middle. I'm just going to grab a hair bubble because my hair is really annoying me. And then you're going to come back in and do the cat cows, but this time we're going to reach our left leg behind us and the crunching in action. So on an inhale, broadening through the chest, reaching that foot behind us, and then exhale to crunch in, round through the spine, no to, nose to your knee. Inhale to reach out nice and long, and exhale to crunch it in, keeping our weight light in our hands, not pushing into the ground too much here. We want to focus on there we exhale, crunching in, lighting up our front body. Inhale to reach out. And exhale to crunch in. Inhale to reach out one more time. And exhale to really crunch in, lift that knee high, high, high. And then bringing it back down to the mat. And then keeping your legs and your hips exactly as they are. We're just going to pull our hands forward coming into a melting heart pose. And if the ground feels a little bit far away here, you're, you're welcome to bring your hands up into a block. And just let your shoulders sink down to the mat. Bring your forehead down to the mat here, keeping your hips nice and high. And moving the outer edges of your hips away from each other so your sit bones are gonna pull apart from each other. And you feel it really lightening up in your glutes. Just having some nice deep breaths into your underarm. Then inhale to look up and exhale. Just bring your hands back through to all fours, just placing your block if you used it over to the mat. We're going to lift our left leg up behind us on an inhale and then exhale. We do the actual crunching it in again. We're going to crunch it in so much. We're going to place our left foot in between our hands. And then on the inhale, we're going to reach up into our low lunge. So sinking down with that right hip, keeping your hips nice and square, so I'm facing forward. Your left foot's going to feel like it's dragging back and your right knee's going to feel like it's pulling forward. And that'll lighten up the whole back line of your left leg so your hamstrings start to work. Tailbone's again going to be nice and tucked under, so we're not reaching back like this. Our tailbone's tucked under and our right glutes are engaged. And then squeezing everything into our midline. So we've got a nice, imagine there's a line all the way down your body. You want to think about everything coming together. That'll lighten up those deep um, core muscles and keep you nice and balanced. You're going to bring your right hand out to the side. Thumb is going to face up towards the ski of the ceiling, bend the elbow and then place your palm in between your shoulder blades and then your left hand can just come to place on top of that hand. And when you do this, try not to let your ribs flare out, keep your torso exactly as it is. The only thing that's moving is your arms. She's called go cast in our arms. I'm gonna inhale the other on exhale, we're just gonna lean slightly to the left hand side. Keeping that engagement with our legs to keep our balance. You feel a nice stretch from your right hip flexor all the way up to your right side. Keep 
taking some deep breaths. Keep that breath with you. And inhale through the center. And then we're just going to lean slightly to the right hand side now. So not as big a stretch on the left hand side, but you should feel some elongation on your left side body. And keep squeezing everything. We're really working our balance. And then inhale through the center. And we're going to bring our right hand just to the back of our right thigh. Reaching our left hand up, just coming into a slight reverse of our lunge here. Our legs and our torso stay exactly the same. We're just coming into a bit of a back bend, just keeping that strength in our legs. And then inhaling through the center, then coming into half split. So you're going to shift your weight back so that your right knee is directly under your right hip. Your left toes are going to come to the ceiling. And you're going to keep a slight bend in that left leg. If you lock out your left leg, you tend to um, nip some nerves there. Now, if you do have your block, you can bring your block underneath your left leg or your back just to keep that chest nice and open. With every inhale, you're going to reach up. With every exhale, you're just going to think about folding into that pose. Keep sending that left hip back, right hip forward. Breathing into the back line of that left leg. One more inhale here, and then exhale, rebending that front foot, just placing your block over to the side. We're going to bring our right hand nice and wide, squeezing those legs together and not losing that strong foundation, and then opening up to the left, just coming into a twisted low lunge. And then reaching that left hand behind you now, so opening through that left chest. Keep sending those hips down towards the mat. And if you want to come into Twisted Monkey, you're welcome to. So using the hamstrings in your right leg, you're going to kick that right heel into your bum. And if you can catch it with your foot, you can grab hold of the outer edge of the pinky side of that left foot. Just increasing the stretch in our quad here and opening up our chest. And exhale to release if you have. Framing your front foot, just gonna pick up our back leg. We're gonna step forward into a forward fold here. So feet are hip width apart, picking up all 10 toes and then placing them back down the mat. So really important we have that solid base. We're gonna to inhale to halfway lift. So hands are gonna to come to your shins, your shoulders in line with your hip and then exhale to forward fold. Then just clasping your fingers and just bring them to the base of your skull. So just adding that little bit of extra weight. And you're gonna have a nice deep bend in your legs here. And exhale to release. Bringing your left hand directly underneath your face or onto a block. And we're going to peel our heart open to the right hand side. So our left leg is going to bend and our right leg might straighten a little bit here. It's feeling a nice stretch all along the right leg and twisting into the body. Keeping that chest nice and open, shoulders away from your ears. And then exhale to swap it up. Right hand's going to come down to the mat of the block. Deep bend in the right knees and the left leg is going to straighten this time. And keep grinding down through your feet. And then exhale to forward fold. Just setting your block away from the side. Inhale to halfway lift, opening through the chest. Collarbones are pulling away from each other, shoulder blades together. And then exhale, bring your hands down to the mat. And then just stepping your left leg back. And we're going to drop to our left knee. And inhale to rise up into our low lunge on the right hand side. So same as the left hand side with our with our um, base here. So right foot dragging back, left knee dragging forward, hips are going to be nice and square. So the scissoring action of our legs. And you need both of them to work. If only one of if you only have your right leg coming back, your left leg is going to become unstable. So make sure both legs are working against each other. Again, drawing into that midline, lifting out of your hips, and that tailbone tucking under so your ribs aren't playing out. Finding a good solid base is important. Find our solid base and then we build up from it. Bringing our left hand out to the side, thumb towards the ceiling, 
bending the arm and then bring that palm in between our shoulder blades and again when you bring that palm in make sure your ribs aren't flaring out we're keeping that nice alignment and then bring our right hand just on top of that left hand and you can push your head into your left arm and it'll lighten up your triceps a bit keeping our solid base with our legs we're going to inhale and then exhale leaning out to the right hand side having that solid base to keep our balance Stretching left hip flexor, all the way up our left tricep. And squeezing those hips together. And then inhale through the center and then exhale, just leaning slightly over to the left. So really squeezing that right hip in to keep our balance. Not too big a side stretch here, more challenging for our legs. And then inhale through the center, reach both hands up. Left hand is just gonna come down the back of the left leg and we're just gonna reach from the right fingertips all the way up, just coming into a slight back bend, keeping the, that base nice and strong. And then exhale, bringing both hands down, coming into our half split. So if you wanna grab your block again, just bring your block behind your right heel. We're just gonna shift our weight back. You might need to walk that right heel forward a little bit, making sure your left Hip is directly above that left knee, right toes up to the ceiling. And again, keeping those hips nice and square. So if you need to show your right hip back a little bit. Inhale to find length in your spine and exhale to fold over that right leg and keeping a nice bend in that right leg if it's needed. And just visualizing your breath running up and down the back of that right leg. And then exhaling to come back into our low lunge, just placing our block over to the side. Left hand's gonna come wide, legs, base is gonna be exactly the same, peeling our heart open to the right hand side. So really grinding down through our left arm so we can stretch all the way out through our chest and all the way out through our fingertips. And again, if you wanna reach that right arm back, you can, and then using our um, hamstrings on our left leg, pulling our left heel in and just grabbing the pinky side of that foot. So we're getting a little bit more of a stretch along our chest and scissoring those legs together. And if you have the bind just on an exhale, just slowly release, bring both hands down to frame that front foot, picking up your back foot, stepping forward into our forward fold. Inhale up to halfway lift, really push through your feet, and exhale to forward fold. Inhale, we're gonna reach our arms all the way up to the sky, and then exhale, bring your hands through the heart center. Just gonna step back so you can fully see me here. And then bring your hands down to Tadasana. So when you come down to Tadasana, imagine your body is peeling nice and open, so your quads slide up, your chest spirals, hands face forward, just close down your eyes. And feeling that energy moving through your body. The energy that you created. And the you that you are right now. And then slowly just blinking your eyes open. We're just gonna pick up our right leg and just bring it behind us directly at a 90 degree angle. So our knee is going to squeeze in and our feet are going to be flexed. You can keep your hands on your hips here or heart centered or above your head, whichever is comfortable for you. Above your head is most challenging. And squeezing those hips in, letting that tailbone tuck under. On an inhale, we're just going to keep that angle with our leg. Just bring our knee up in line with our hip. And then exhale, we're going to send it back, keeping that 90 degree angle. Inhale to bring it forward. And exhale, descend it back really strong, using those hamstrings. Inhale forward. And then exhale, descend it back. And this time when we send it back, we're now going to tip our chest forward, keeping that bend in our legs. And then straightening out our legs, 
reaching our hands forward, coming into our warrior one. So really pushing out to that back leg, reaching forward, keeping that tailbone tucked under, nice strong right leg. Taking an inhale here, and then exhale, slowly coming back through the center. And we're just gonna heel toe our feet out to the side so that they're just wider than our hips. Having your block nice and handy, inhale to reach up and exhale. We're gonna sink all the way down into our yogic squat. So if you want, you can grab your block and just place um, your bum on the block here. And using your elbows to really open up your knees. I'm just gonna take a couple of breaths here. So when we're doing our warrior three, you really feel the strength of your base. Taking one more breath, and then exhale to forward fold, moving your block out of the way if you used it. Heel toeing your feet back in so they're directly under your hip. Inhale to halfway lift, and exhale to forward fold. Inhale to sweep our arms up, and exhale, bring your hands back through to heart center. And then just turning around so you can see it a bit better. So on our, we're going to ground down to our right foot this time and pick up our left knee and our knee is going to flex at 90 degrees. Squeezing those hips together, really pushing the ground away with your right leg so you feel like you're lifting your hips out of your femur bone. And then inhale, we're going to bring it forward, keeping that angle and exhale, we're going to send it back. Inhale to bring it forward, using those hamstrings to keep it in that position, and exhale to send it back. Inhale, bringing it forward, nice active through your toes, you're splaying your toes, and exhale to bring it back. Taking an inhale here, and then exhale, just like a seesaw, as your chest comes on, your legs gonna come up behind you, squeezing your hips in, and then straightening that back leg, keep pushing out through your toes, and then reaching your hands forward, coming into your warrior one. So elongating right from your fingertips all the way to your left toes. Pushing into that right leg, it might be dancing a little bit. And then exhale to come out, come into your forward fold. Inhale to halfway lift, and then exhale, hands down to that. And again, just walking your feet so that they're mat width, and your toes are gonna turn to 10 and two. Having your block nice and handy, coming down into your yogic squat. Again, you can use support underneath your bum if you want. We're gonna stay for about four or five breaths. So closing down your eyes if you like. Breathing into the hips. Keeping your chest nice and open. And then exhale to forward fold, walking your feet in. And then in your forward fold, deep bend, and we're gonna come up onto our toes and then we're gonna sink our heels down. So squeezing those heels in towards another, squeezing your knees in and then rising up. It's really strengthening through your ankles here, keeping your shoulders away from your ears. And then we're gonna bring both hands out in front. Really using our balance here. And as if you were going to draw an arrow with your right hand, you're gonna clasp forward, you're gonna bring your arm all across your chest and then spin yourself out to the right hand side. Coming into a twist. So again, really challenging your balance. You're probably feeling that your whole body's dancing here and that's absolutely fine. One more breath here and then exhale just as you came into it, like restringing that bow. Come forward. And just placing your hands on that and just straightening your legs and you can wiggle out your ankles a little bit here. And then coming up onto your balls of your feet, and then sinking your bum back down onto your heels, squeezing those knees together. And you can stay here if that's enough for the strength in your knees, or your ankles, sorry. Inhale, lift those hands up in front. Imagine you're holding like a ball here. So you wanna think about magnetizing your arms together. And then again, just like we did on the other side with our bow, so grabbing with the left hand, pulling it down our right arm, pulling it across our body, and opening out to the left hand side. And just letting your gaze fall wherever is natural for you. Breathing into your calf muscles, breathing into your ankles. Inhale here, and then exhale to come out. And just rolling over the ankles and coming to sit in your bum. And you're just gonna hug our knees 
in towards our chest just for a couple of breaths. So really strengthening through our ankles there and grinding down, feeling that strength in our legs. And then we're going to come into a modified um, boat pose here. So you're going to roll the chest open to your my collarbones away from each other, your hands are going to spin either side. And I want you to lean back just so you can feel your tummy start to catch. So just so you feel the front body start to catch. Then on an inhale, you're going to lift your left toe up to the ceiling. And then exhale, bring it down. Inhale, right toe up. And exhale, bring it down. And just lightly touching it with the floor. Inhale your left. Bring it down. And inhale your right. And bring it down. You might be feeling slight quivers in your body as you do this. There we inhale to lift the leg. Exhale down. Inhale, lift up. Exhale down. Just one more on each side. Inhale to lift. Exhale down. Inhale to lift. Keep your chest nice and proud. Exhale down and then hug your knees in. And rock from side to side. Now we're just going to straighten both our legs out, bringing our right knee into our chest, your right big toe is going to be on the inside of your left foot here. Bring our right hand behind us and just hugging that left knee in. The same applies as we did at the start of practice, so this idea of reaching out of our hips and on an exhale, twisting out, pulling our low tummy in and up. Broadening through the chest. Inhale here and then exhale. I'm just going to do a slight counter twist. You're just going to twist slightly out to the left hand side. And then you're going to place that right knee onto the ground so that your right sole of your foot is on the inside edge of your left leg. And if it needs to be further away, that's absolutely fine. And then if you want, you can kind of move the fleshy bits out of the way as you're sitting really high up in your sit bones here. Your left toe is going to be flexed up to the ceiling. We're going to inhale here, keeping this nice long spine. You're going to exhale, fold. So try not to round the back too much here. And if you want, you can bring a block to even sit on top of your leg just to bring the leg up. Shoulders are away from your ears. And keep flexing that left foot. So you should feel an opening in the outside of your right hip here as well. Taking one more inhale here, right to the back of your left leg. And then exhale to rise up. Right leg's gonna come in front this time. Left foot, big toe in the inside edge of your right knee. Left hand behind you. If you wanna bring a block to the um, ground as close to the left hand side, you can. Inhale, reach up, exhale, twist to the left. So hugging that right knee in. And if you feel enough openness and you wanna hook your right elbow to the outside edge of your left foot, so your hand's nice in the air, you can. I find doing this is quite fun. You can always do kind of fun, fun things with your hands when you're up in the air with this. Keep pulling that low tummy up. Don't let your ribs flare. And inhale here. And then exhale to slowly unwind again. You can just do a slight counter twist around to the right. And then sole with your foot inside. And again, if you want to just move yourself about, so you can sit up really tall here. So grinding your hips in towards the mat, lifting the low belly up, lift up through the chest. And then exhale to fold over that right leg, the toes up towards the ceiling. And just go to whichever level you want to here. We're starting to slow the body down, so not forcing yourself into any poses. Taking one more inhale right to the back of your leg. And then exhale to slowly walk yourself up. And then just crossing over the ankles and just coming onto all fours. And you're just going to take your pillow and kind of put it in between your hands and your knees while you're on all fours. You're then going to push up into plank. Don't worry, just briefly. Picking up your right knee and then bringing your right knee behind your right foot. And then just moving that pillow so that you're coming to sit on top of the pillow. So it's kind of in between your hips here. And we're just coming into a nice supported um, pigeon pose. So right knee behind the right wrist and your toes are going to point down towards the left hand side. 
and then think about your weight and your hips sinking into the pillow is equal. So try not to lean too much on the right hand side, you want that weight to be distributed. And inhale here, and you can stay up nice and high or you can lean forward. Just going to come into this for a couple of breaths. So really think about that. If you're rolling onto your right hip, try to let the weight go into your left hip as well. It should be nice and equal. Breathing deeply into our right hip. If you need to shimmy your left leg back a little bit, you can. Try to keep those shoulders away from your ears. And inhale to lift the chest and slowly walk the hands back. Placing your hands close to your hips as you can and picking up, sorry, going on the ball of your back foot, picking that up and then just swapping it up. So left knee in towards that left wrist, foot at 45 degrees, you're to move that pillow a little bit and then sinking your hips down to the pillow. And just using your hands here for a second, just so you can really feel that weight going into your right hip as much as your left hip. And then once you've got that, just finding some stillness. So whether that be up in your fingertips or folding forward into your sleeping pigeon. Just letting the pillow just give you that bit of support here. And it also just adds a little bit of texture to the pose in the sense that quite often we come into this pose, both hips can't come onto the mat. So by giving us, by bringing that mat up to we're able to feel which hip is letting the weight drop more. So it just kind of balances things out. Taking one more breath here, and then exhale to come up. And you can just roll onto the side, and just move your pillow just to the very top of your mat. And then just quickly giving our legs a little windshield wiper. And then hugging our knees into our chest, we're gonna to come to roll down on the mat. So don't put your head in the pillow just yet. Straightening uh, your right leg out, left leg's gonna be bent just to the uh, inside edge of your right foot and then letting your legs drop out to the right hand side, just coming into a supine twist. Just to close our practice off. releasing our breath a little bit here. Maybe closing down your eyes. And just maybe bringing some awareness back to what the intention was in class today. We were focusing on you and what makes you, you. Inhaling back through the center and then just swapping that up to left leg nice and straight, right leg bent, and then dropping out to the left hand side. Thinking about all the grinding that we did in class. Everything we did really came from the ground up. And it's that grinding in our strong base that gives us the support that we need. They are the feet that put us on the path that we take in life. So it's important that we give them some attention and we let them grind us when we need them to. Next inhale, just slowly coming through the center. And if you want, just grabbing that pillow and just placing your head on that pillow just for a slightly more nourishing shavasana. If you want to keep your feet bent, you can, or just bringing your feet nice and long either side of your mat. Bringing your shoulder blades down your back, and you're going to bring your right hand onto your tummy, left hand onto your chest. Just so that we're slightly more nourishing here. And if you feel like you need to take a sigh to really sink yourself into the mat, you can. Just holding your stillness and your quiet shavasana for a couple of moments. 